welcome to today's 3D print. I got some new prints. I got a whole bunch of prints printing. Well, these are printing parts. One of my enders is down. The power supply died. It, it doesn't put out power anymore. It's just a bad power supply. No big deal. This is a new one. Um, well, I found out I can use an Xbox power supply. So maybe I'll get an Xbox power supply. But um, first, I printed out another starship. You guys remember Voyager, right? That badass Voyager print that I made came out absolutely amazing. Well, I got the, the D Space Nine runabout to work. And this printed like this on the Ender 2. That's how good the Ender is. With just this here and these two points of contact, this thing printed almost perfectly standing up like this. <laughs> Take a look at this. The details on this thing are mind-numbing. And this is the very tippy top. Look how nice that is. Incredible. I had to run it through NetFab, of course. I'm glad I printed it vertically because it had a lot more details on the bottom than I thought, and it would have been ruined if I would have printed it on the bottom with support. As to stands, the only part that got whacked by the support is the stuff in here because you need a little bit of support in here. Although, now I wonder. I wonder if I can get away with printing this without support. I mean, it would look a little worse on the bottom here. Nah, I guess I probably need support. If it was flat, it might work, because it would run across. Maybe I'll make it flat, if I can figure out how to edit it without decimating it. If I make that flat inside there, with the details lost anyway, if I can make that flat, then I could probably print this without support. And um, this is, it came out so nice. Beautiful, beautiful details. You know, details in here. Very cool. Shuttle came out great. And um, you guys remember this, right? <laughs> the hot air balloon. This is printed on the, the Ender 2 with only this uh, five millimeter attachment to the bed. Not even a not even a brim. <laughs> That's how good these printers are. So, I knew it wasn't going to print perfectly, but I was okay with that. It came out more than good enough. I printed one on the CR-10. <laughs> I gotta lean back for this one. <laughs> Look at that. This is printed using 3D Solutex Ultra PLA. The, um, the pink one. And it is amazing. There's a lot of um, noise on the Z-axis, but that's okay. I turned the, the flow rate up to 110% because I knew it was going to be an issue, but I could actually see this thing just very slightly moving when it was printing. And I put a 10mm um, brim on it as well, but uh, I knew this was going to wiggle around a little bit while I was printing, but the fact that it worked at all was amazing. You can see there's some separations here. It's because this this angle is too much. Now when you're printing small like this, the filament is close enough to the previous strand to attach to it. Okay. To do that with this size, I would need like a, a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I think that might do it if I had a 0.6 millimeter or 0.6 millimeter extrusion. Um, I think then it might successfully work up here like it did on that one. But that's okay. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. You can barely tell there's any problems up there. The, the integrity is good enough. I'm actually surprised it held together considering the um, layer bonding issue this PLA has, but it worked great. <laughs> I do believe I will be modifying this one. I'm going to print the basket wider and I'm going to put um, use wood fill PLA, the Hatchbox wood fill PLA. And uh, I'll go put lights in this one. Hmm. Yeah, it'll definitely light up. I can see through it. So um, it will light up if I put an LED inside there. Put like a one watt LED in there. I think this would look very pretty. So that is a very cool print. I'm very happy with that. Okay. Now, 
This one is also very cool, and I mean really freaking cool. Once again, the Ender 2 did a ridiculously good job. Um, this is getting supersized. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this on the CR10. <laughs> I'm going to take over the world with my minion army of octopi. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh my god, the detail's so good. I got this off my mini factory. Um, I gotta find a link so I can post it to you guys. This is great. It came out so good. And this is, um, I believe this is four or three or four perimeters and no infill and no support. It came with a square base. I just sank it into the bed to make that base go away so it was just the octopus. And it came out absolutely amazing. I love this thing so much. It actually looks good in white too. I'm trying to decide, do I want to print this in Ultra PLA white or Ultra PLA green? I think I'm gonna do the green, like the uh, Aria Dragon. I think this would look cool in the green. Um, but, I don't think I can do this with no infill on the CR-10. I believe the same problem with the balloon. I believe these flat areas would be too much for it. Um, I don't think the layers would stick properly there. I think you'd have those gaps that you have on the balloon. I wish I could make it hollow on the CR-10 though. Because what I want to do is I want to put an LED up inside of here, one that flickers, and then put like multicolor or different color LEDs on the tentacles. And you know, put a little LED right at the bottom here and have it light up the tentacle. I think that would look really slick. And I think infill would interfere with that. I'm gonna try it anyway, because I think it would look cool. But yeah, this guy, he's queued up to be mega printed. Oh yeah. You're gonna see a much, much bigger one of these. But it prints absolutely beautifully on the ender too. And of course, as usual, go to that perfect bottom layer from the print and Z surface. Oh man, I love this. This is printed using eSun's PLA Pro in, um, I believe it's warm white. Yeah, it looks warm white to me. The neutral warm white. I love this print. This this thing is cool. And I got one more. Got the E10, the ANA E10 working again. Turns out, <laughs> um, I had moved one of the clips out of the way because this print was so large that it got close to the clip and that clip got bumped one more time by the fan shroud and it put it in the path of the Z stepper motor so just like the plug facing inward hitting the control knobs the leveling knobs well my binder clip I take the handles off of course but the binder clip the shell was hitting the Z stepper motor which caused it to stutter and go crazy of course and so of course it lost register and it wasn't printing right so I got that all taken care of um, it's all put back together, everything's perfect, it's printing again. I'm actually printing something in a natural PLA with no color, and it looks fantastic. I might do more prints in the natural color, I think it looks pretty nice. But the first one I did in white, I got the Cuddling Owls. Isn't that cute? I might actually try my hand at painting this. The E10 did a great job, I mean, it's, it's no ender print, but it's not bad. I have no complaints. I have a limited amount of infill in the feet, I believe. No, I did them hollow and it worked. Yeah, you can tell. Little tiny gaps will pop here because I didn't use any infill. But it, it's good enough and you can barely tell they're there. I did add um, infill starting here on up because I knew the tops of the heads would not form correctly if I didn't have infill there. So there's infill in the top of the heads to make sure that they would close correctly and it did. No holes. This is a cute print. So this printed obviously this way on the printer, um, lengthwise. And I am happy. This this came out great. I love this. Um, I believe I have time lapse of the shuttle, the uh, the runabout printing. I don't know if I got time lapse of the octopus or not. I might not have. Because I think I was pointing at this when that happened. But I'll check the camera and see if I got time lapse of it. Um, it's recording another video now, so if it's on the memory card, I won't be able to post it after this video to be later. I'll post it. But, um, yeah, they came out great. Here's the, the 
Howling Owls. I will post a link to that. This is actually a cool print. I might try my hand at painting and try painting this, you know, just do the eyes and the beak and, um, you know, the edges of the feathers. Just keep it mostly white. But I might try my hand at painting if I have time. I liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was cute. I liked it. It was cool looking. So I printed it. And then, of course, you have the octopus, which you saw, the shuttle, which you saw. This is great. This is the Deep Space Nine Danube shuttle, or runabout. Um, look for the 1 2000s scale ones. They have all the really good details. Just make sure you run it through NetBab first. I'll have a link to this, of course, but um, he has a whole bunch of other ships that he extracted from whatever game he got them from. But um, you make sure you run it through NetFab first because the files are made up of sometimes hundreds of little parts and your slicer will go ape shit. It will make weird results. You saw the first one I printed, it was total garbage because it was all those intersecting. Um, they were manifold, but there were a whole bunch of intersecting parts and the slicers don't like that. Um, I got the <laughs> humidity down to. 10-11% inside the bag with the pet G, so I don't know if that's going to be enough or not. I figure I'll leave it there for a couple of days. And that is the second time that printer did that. My Wandhound Duplicator 3 will turn off while running. I don't know why. Hmm. Something's not right. I just noticed it wasn't running again. It, it, it'll just stop and then you'll see the screen reboot and, and it boots back up again. I wonder if something's overheating. Because I haven't done any enhanced cooling on the um, 100 computer i3. And I don't know why it would do that. I'll have to play with it. I don't think I have anything else for tonight. I printed parts and stuff like that, but you know, that's you guys probably aren't too interested in that. Like here is um, a part that I designed for my rockets. I call it an anti-zipper capsule. Okay, these two halves would screw together. What it is is you would take the shock cord of your rocket and you would put a knot in it, and you'd sandwich this over the knot, glue it, zip tie it, screw it in place, whatever you want to do. And the idea is, when a rocket deploys its nose cone, there's a cord attached to the nose cone, a shock cord, so that you don't lose the nose cone, and it all comes out as one piece. Well, if the rocket's still moving pretty fast when that cord comes out and that parachute comes out, the nose cone parachute could get yanked that way because the rocket's still moving. So I guess the parachute and nose cone are actually slowing down while the rocket's still going and that cord sticking out of your rocket will zipper the side of your tube. It'll put a slot. It'll cut right into the side of your tube and it's called a zipper. Well, the idea of this, this one's actually counter to the thicker one is for smaller tubes, the flatter one is for thinner or bigger tubes. The idea is this would sit at the end of the shock cord right there. So that now instead of that thin little shock cord creasing into that tube and cutting it, you have this big pellet, this big capsule, which spreads the force across a much larger surface area, so much so that it can no longer damage your body tube. So it's an anti-zipper capsule. So I'm printing out those on my printer. I think that's it. I have a another 70 or 80 hour print going on a CR10 and I have a 50 hour, 55 hour print going on an A9E10. I'm going to need to figure out what's wrong with the Wandhound tomorrow. If anybody knows what would cause a Wandhound computer i3 to be printing away and then suddenly just stop, screen reboots and boots back up again. No idea why it's doing that. I'm, I'm assuming loose wire, overheat. I don't know. I gotta figure out how to diagnose that to figure it out. Um, I just noticed the camera has a countdown timer. I'm guessing that is until my clip size reaches the gigabyte limit. Because it's 128 gig cards, so I know I'm not running out of space. So that must be when it's going to create a second clip. Interesting. Um. That's it. Alright. I will see you guys later. My, my next video will be either a build 
of a printer or the next group of prints when they're done on the printers. And I will see you guys in the future.